Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mitali Upadhi from Pune, your holistic health consultant and emotional wellness therapist. And today Hi. we have with us. Hi, everyone. My name is Preeti Gopal. I'm also from Pune, but uh, I'm living in Munich in Germany for the longest time. For over 20 years, I'm in Germany. Nice to be here, Dr. Mitali. And I think Preeti is a mindset coach. That's right. Yes, I'm a mindset life coach. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. So we have been talking about coping with grief and loss for some time. And this is one of, one of the areas which has been a very sensitive areas for people, especially in the recent time. I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of people when it comes to managing and uh, dealing with grief and loss. It was a pleasure to associate with Preeti while Preeti was also going through her very important phase of her life. And recently, I happened to read a beautiful article which she has posted on LinkedIn, which says lessons learned from my father. Where she shares about her journey with her father towards the last days of his life when he was coping with his cancer. And we've taken this opportunity to talk with Preeti. So because Preeti has been wonderful to come forward and share her moments with her father and the lessons that she's taken home. So over to you, Preeti. I would like you to first begin from the point where how was it like when it was coping with the anticipatory grief of having Baba around and knowing that he may not be around for a very long time? <laughs> Just brings back that those moments. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you. Thank you. It's, 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 it's nice to be here. And I really feel like... Uh, all of us, we, we, we benefit from sharing. So many of us are going through it. So the more we talk about it, the, I feel it's easier. Whenever we are ready, it's easier for each one of us to cope. And you feel like I'm not alone in, in, in grief and loss. I'm really glad to be able to, to share my experience. Yeah, so as you said, uh, my dad, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer and uh, he lived with it He got, uh, for two years, or, uh, almost two years. And, uh, and he passed about six months ago in, in Pune. One, I'm very, very grateful despite COVID and all of that, I got to spend a lot of time with him. Uh, we even spent Diwali uh, together just before he passed. So that was a beautiful journey. And um, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to lose a loved one, especially losing a parent is hard. But another thing that I found also difficult was knowing that you're going to lose your loved one. So that was doing fairly well. And I'm very, I'm like a crazy optimist. And I believe in miracles. So till the very end, I thought, you know, he'll make it through. He'll make it through despite any, uh, you know, any. Uh, uh. Um, so, uh, but then, you know, the last, last three weeks, he was bedridden and you could see his health was deteriorating. So we knew this, this is it. And that, that is a different uh, sort of grief, you know, the, the, letting, the letting go part. And what I would do was, so dad was uh, 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 bed, bedridden and he could, he, could, he could barely speak. He was speaking, then his voice was sort of, you know, getting softer and so he could barely speak. And, but I would just go into, you know, one thing I found, what was important, I got the sense of key, this is going to be it. And I want, I don't want to have regrets. You know, I think because that must be so hard because when a loved one's passed, then it's too late. Then I could have, should have, would have. That I think I find living with that to be so hard. So I would just go to my dad. We had a wonderful relationship. Uh, we were both very, very attached to each other, but also, you know, it comes with its own, <laughs> own, uh, uh, own sort of conflicts and all of that. So anyway, so I would, what I found very helpful, a friend suggested it to me that I would go to his room when he was sleeping, sit on the bed next to his. And um, there is a prayer, uh, a Hawaiian prayer for healing and forgiveness called Hopo. You have to help me with the name, please. Hopo, no, ho, no, ho. Ho, opo, no, po, no. Ho, opo, no, po, no. Exactly. And it's so simple, but so profound. So I and it goes, I would sit there and softly, I would say, you know, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. You know, and it was, it's, it's such a simple prayer, but I felt it brought a calm into me. You know, you get, I got a sense of closure because of it. And I felt calm and I would go on for 20 minutes, whatever, however long. And I could tell the energy in the room shift. It became calmer. And although my dad was often lying down or sleeping, he was very withdrawn in those days. I could tell that there was a, a sort of a, 
a piece coming on to his onto his face also so i am so sure that what your energy that you're emitting your loved one is receiving it they are receiving it you know and this simple prayer every day i would go a couple of times and just say that it helped me get a sense of closure saying our goodbye saying thank you for just being who you were and yeah and i know that dad received that energy and that helped immensely to to let go um and also another thing when he could speak he used to say you know dying is hard but let me go let me go please you know that's when my sisters my mom and i understood you know we just at that point in time you just want the best for your loved one you want them to be free of pain you want them to be free so so we understood that it's in his for his greatest good that we let him go so then he would say every day he would say please let me go please let me go and then we you know or we were being there for him and i would just hold his hand and say you know baba you are free you know you've given us everything we are we love each other we'll take care of each other we're strong we live your values we are well taken care of you've done everything for us you are free to go baba trust in your process and you are free to go you will always be in our hearts um so yeah so letting him you know i think it's important that we as his loved ones told him yes we are not holding you back you know from our side you are free to go and that brought we saw the change on his face he was then peaceful till then you could tell he was troubled it must be hard for them to let go but seeing his family tell him you're free to go we love you you're always in our hearts that brought a peace so yeah i found that to be uh to be helpful in letting the person go and letting him know we are safe you please carry on and we carry you in our hearts yeah that's that's beautiful sharing and i think as you said that brought the closure for not just him but also for all of you and it allowed him to go peacefully and uh, the the beautiful ho'oponopono technique that you shared so simple and yet having such a profound effect on you to find your uh, navigate your uh, grief as well as for him to find his closure as as rightly said in uh, the the prayer allows you to complete your energy and i'm so glad that uh, you found found it at the right right time and uh, i mean how how is it like when baba moved on i mean it's been about 6 months now six months, yeah. how was yeah. how how have you been coping with uh, with the mm. loss how are you navigating the pain would you like to talk a little bit more about it because that's the time when it's it's so hard when you want your loved ones to say stay back mm. the more time you spend with them the more they are with you it's always blessed but yet um, you you have to live with the reality so yeah do you like yeah. to talk about that yeah sure first of all i think for us it didn't it didn't sink in it's such a shock even if we knew right he was he was he had cancer so we knew but when it happened that this person is physically not there it's such a shock so for it to sink in it took a while while for uh, uh, for us but you know i think there are t- two when he was suffering and when he passed all my focus was on let him be well do what is right for him you know we'll be missing him but we'll figure that out right now we want just just freedom and peace for my dad you know and which we are so grateful we had then 2 3 months later it hit me oh because i wasn't thinking of myself then i was just let dad be in peace let dad be free you know and then 2 3 months later it hit me oh my god i'm never going to see my dad in physical form and that it's still something you know when my mom and we, we sisters talk it's in like i can't believe it that the finality of it is very shocking but 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 one learns to to accept it and one thing that's helping us like immensely okay whatever one believes but we believe uh my mom does so i do so that his spirit his soul his energy whatever you want to call it is around it's really the physical physical body that we cannot see and uh we feel his energy like i talk to him every morning i uh, my son before going to school he says hi good morning ajuba and you know he talks to him and it the same my mom says she feels she's she's living alone now in pune and she says you know i feel such comfort when she does her uh, aarti her puja her prayers there's a you know chair where dad would sit when she would do. she opens that chair and she says uh, come on we are doing our aarti now or morning tea they would have in the garden so she still she doesn't sit on dad's chair she still keeps his chair and says 
यु नो इन मराठी चला आपण चहा पिऊया आता चहा पेची वेळ झाली यु नो इट्स टाइम टी अँड शी सेस इट गिव्ह हर सच कम्फर्ट शी जस्ट डझन्ट फील अ लोन यु नो अँड इट इज रिअली ट्रू आय वुड लाईक टू शेअर वन वन एक्सपिरियन्स ॲक्च्युली आय हॅड अ कपल दिस वन एक्सपिरियन्स so you know i was once just uh, talk talking to my dad after he had moved after he had passed and i was missing him and i said dad give me one sign a very explicit sign you know that you are in a place of peace health and light mostly i said dad you know we are doing well but i want to know that you are in a place of light please give me a sign that i will not settle a clear sign that you are in light and and uh, you know and and uh, so i would say and i don't know how you're going to do it but as always i know you you will figure out a way I trust you'll figure out a way just do it for me show me your in light is talking to him and literally so this i'm doing like in germany while i'm just uh, you know on the drive i was talking and and literally about half an hour or one hour later i don't remember my sister who's in pune she sent me a picture of our dad in in his cabin in the office So there's a big picture we put up a uh, lovely picture of him and she sends me a picture where there is just sunlight coming only from the window only on dad's face dr mitali i kid you not there is light nowhere else only on his like it's like this is like a slanting like sort of a, nice of light yeah of light only on his face and my sister sends me this she's saying priti you won't believe it every afternoon at 3 pm the sun comes in and it shines only on baba's face nowhere else and she sent me sort of a zoomed out picture of the whole cabin that's cabin there's no sunlight anywhere except on his face and this wow. happened half maximum one hour after i asked my dad show me that you are in light and i get a picture of him in light and my sister has no idea i'm i'm asking this to my dad you know so i and i've had many more experiences my mom shares experiences so i feel believing that your loved one spirit is around they are experiencing you it's just i believe that they are just only the physical form has gone you know but the spirit is still there and i think like you know none of us know at least not until now nobody knows what happens after passing right so if you're anyways believing if you're anyways making assumptions then i you know i say why not make an assumption that that let's make assumptions that that bring comfort and well being add into our well being you know let's let's draw inferences uh that that help us heal and move on yeah right is right, 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 right. the truth god knows if we'll ever know science we nobody has an answer to what happens so let me and my experiences tell me that the spirit is around he's so we've ma, we do, we feel so guided and protected we know baba is there protecting and looking out for us you know so believing that is just beautiful it takes away uh so much literally so much of the pain and this feeling of being being um alone so i think you know it's a, i i see it as a soul's journey you know it is a soul one is so grateful that this soul manifested as one's loved one as my dad in this life but when he let go you know when he was in his passing also you could tell he was a very attached emotional um very very attached and emotional to us his family was everything for him and to see him in his last days you could draw from that you know it's something it was so sort of life change altering for me to see okay someone who's as attached as emotional with his family you know because when i would say those prayers or sometimes i would just chant you know in his room say oh my just sit there he would feel it and then he would ask for me to leave you know and i'm like okay that's when i saw this is a soul who's now getting ready for his onward journey he's not just my dad anymore you know our dad anymore so seeing him withdraw wanting to move on i said okay so this soul has decided to move on wants to move on you know that also helped create a sense of healthy detachment and to say okay you know he's he's ready for his onward onward journey so that helped a lot as well yeah so that's that's a wonderful share uh, preeti three very important points that you brought forward while you were talking about this first and foremost as you said it's so important for us to know that the person who has moved on is in in a good is in is in a good space yes. and so when you communicate honestly with that soul so beautifully the messages come to you they do 
so lovely to see that, experience that light and to be as a part of that communication. Second important thing, as you said, to know that we are being looked upon, especially when it's a figure like a father or a mother. Mm -hmm. We always want them in our life and we always want them to be still our caregivers, our caretakers, our, yeah. our protectors. And to experience that energy and to communicate with that energy on a day-to-day -day basis, that is something very profound. So there's no need to push it under the carpet, to keep running away from it. It's so important to make that person and his memories a part of your day-to-day -day life and learn to live with it on a yeah. regular regular basis yeah. it's, it's it's really lovely and the third part as you said I mean everyone loves to hold on to life mm -hmm. and as a relative as a family member to be able to help the one who is supposed to move on for whatever reasons it might be health disease anything to support that journey yeah. through hope open or through chanting on to is is, is so profound to be a part of the journey yeah. so sometimes we are just onlookers to their pain to their suffering and instead it's so nice to see that you and your family took up the role of supporting him and helping him to finally overcome oh, no, his, uh, yeah. his his fears to let go and to take that 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 plunge upward and onward yeah really and one thing you know i felt is also when we move on for moving on we often feel um you know, there are days when you feel guilty. Oh God, I'm moving on. How my father passed. How can I be in a space of even, how can I even smile or laugh? Or You know, there is a sense of sometimes a guilt that I'm moving on. There is a sense of, am I, you know, am I abandoning my loved one? Sometimes I feel, oh my God, I'm leaving my Baba alone. You know, behind, we feel a sense of we are abandoning them, betraying them, you know, if we are moving on. But then when I realized, you know, I'm like, no this soul who was my dad in this life that soul has already moved on that soul made the decision that now it's time for them to move move on so they've actually moved on they're they're they forward you know they're onward and upward and forward you know so there and that helped me sort of get rid of the, the feeling of guilt I said oh no Baba's already moved on because that was his decision you know he's probably in a better place so I don't want him to look back and say oh god my children this uh, uh, you know my loved ones or my wife are stuck that would pain them so they've moved on we are the ones now who must move on and not holding on so holding on and clinging on to it is not you being there for them because they've moved on it's, it's probably just causing them more pain. I don't know if they feel that, but to see, they would want you to move on. So that helped me immensely to know, okay, Baba's moved on. It was his decision. So the best is let's us move on as well. You know, so that helped a lot to sort of um, deal with, uh, to reduce, no, not reduce, get rid of. I don't have any guilt for moving on. And also I feel each one of us has our own life. It's a, it's a beautiful gift. It's a, it's a blessing by refusing to move on because one's loved one has passed is dishonoring the gift of my life that I have here, isn't it? You know, I'm not, I'm not being a better uh, uh, daughter by refusing to live my life. You know, my dad was a go-getter. He was a self-made man. He, you know, he, he, he's given us these values. It would break his heart to see now my daughter's stuck. Is this what I've taught her? He'd be like, ah, this is what I've taught you. You know, he, he lost his parents at a very, very young age. He was orphaned at the age of 15. So his life is, is testament to moving on and thriving in life. So it would pain him. So I'm like, no, you know, even my mom says she's 70, but she says, no, Preeti, you know, I have my life. I have my health. It's my responsibility to look after myself. Otherwise, we are dishonoring the gift of our life. And doing that in no way is being loyal to the person who passed. No, you know, so we have to move on. And I feel, you know, sometimes it's, it's lonely when you're, facing law when you're dealing with law so um so thanks for this opportunity to talk because i think when more of us share our experiences a we don't feel like oh i'm alone in this and you know there doesn't have to be a taboo about about death this whole taboo we're so scared to say the d word also you know so the more of us share i would love that it's I mean, I don't want to get like abstract or metaphysical, but it is an inevitable part of life. And the more we, uh, you know, shy away or us get to talk about it, that's why there's this taboo around it. You know, so yeah, so I, 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 I yeah, I would, I'm, I'm happy to be able to share, and I really would encourage anybody who's going through it to, to share. You know, share the, the pain only. You know, it's not like by not sharing, you're not reminded of your loved one. You're thinking of them anyways all the time. So share it, and that 
but that it, it really helps in healing and moving so on. So beautiful, Preeti. It's such a wonderful thought that you have said. And it would be dishonoring their death. It would be dishonoring them if we don't choose to move on, if we don't take life in our hands and live it to the fullest. Yes. And that's, that's true because our, our loved ones would never want us to remain stuck in grief. They would want us to be happy. And as you said, that they too have go, are moving onwards and forwards. So beautiful message, really beautiful message to everyone out there. I'm so glad that you you really came forward and decided to talk to us about this. I know it's not easy. It's not easy. And it's so I'm so glad that you made this choice, Priti. Thank you so much for coming forward and sharing. As you as you appealed, I would be glad I would be glad if more people come forward and talk about what it has been like for them because it's together that we learn, we grow, we support one another and create a better, healthier community for all of us to. Uh, live in and to grow grow in so it was Absolutely. it was amazing it was amazing talking to you Preeti it was great to have you and uh, have this wonderful chat and experience sharing uh, looking forward to more such conversations with you and uh, as a growth and life mindset coach I'm sure there's so much more that you would want to bring to the community so I'm really looking forward to you coming forward and giving us your own lessons, learnings, and knowledge. Uh, thanks. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitali. It was lovely. I think, you know, one thing, we worked together on the, on the self-healing uh, program. And I, I think it's wonderful the way you um, make, you create and hold space where, some, where the other person feels safe to open up. And, uh, you know, whether it was our sessions in the self-healing or even right now, I think it's wonderful that you that you hold the space for uh, to to encourage uh, you know, encourage me and others to to open up. So, so thank you very much, and uh, looking forward to more such more such conversations. Definitely, definitely. All right. So, uh, bye bye, viewers from Mitali in India, and bye uh, everyone. See you soon. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.